Dear viewers, welcome to the very first demonstration of PFRS apparatus being used in an electronic circuit. Starting with the various names of the parameters, I like to say this is the function generator. This is the CRO, that is a cathode ray oscilloscope. This is one more uh, function generator. This is a dual power supply. This is a multimeter. And on which we generally mount all the components is known as the breadboard. Let us first concentrate in one of the most important apparatus of electronics that is known as the CRO, that is the cathode ray oscilloscope. Let us look into it in detail. This CRO is known as the cathode ray oscilloscope in which a CRT screen has been used. In this, we have two channels, channel 1, channel 2. Why these two channels are there? In channel 1, you can give one input. In the channel 2, you can give the other input. And in this screen, you can compare both the inputs. Let us go into more detail what this channel 1 do and what this channel 2 do. If you can look into it, see there are various buttons over here. And one is known as the input over here written. So this where we use a PNC both side cable, which is known as a CRO cable. We use this connector over here in connecting this. Now when it is connected in the input, whatever is coming in this side will be shown on the screen. So let us begin with the other things like what is ground, what is AC, DC, what is this invert, what is this Y post. Let me give you an example using this function generator so that the different buttons used in this CRO can be clear to you. I am using this function generator. Here it is written something called output. So from this output means this function generator whatever it is generating will be output from this button and will be coming through this wire into the CRO. So let us connect it over. Now you will uh, explaining you both the function generator as well as CRO together. How a signal is being generated using a function generator and how a signal is being viewed using a CRO. Let us on it. This is CRO I have on. This is the function generator I have on. Now initially it will initialize its settings, then it will come to the normal state. Yes. Now you can see that it is in the normal state. Now as I say the function generator generates a signal. What kind of signal it generates? There are various signals that a function generator can generate. It may be a sinusoidal wave. It may be a triangular wave, it may be a square wave, it may be a pulse, it may be a ramp. So let us take an example of generating a sinusoidal wave of 10 kilohertz. So how can we set this function generator to generate a sinusoidal wave of 10 kilohertz and an amplitude of suppose 2 volt? So first you go to this button called frequency. When I press this frequency, you are getting this is FREQ which denotes frequency and is saying that right now this frequency that is generated by this function generator is 26 kilohertz. By using this knob, you can vary the generated frequency. So I am making it suppose a frequency of 30 kilohertz. And next there is one more button called amplitude. Now you can see it's AMPL denoting amplitude. And you can see it's in the right now generating an amplitude of 10 volt. Using the same knob, you can vary the amplitude. See, it's varying. So suppose we are using an amplitude of 2 volts. So right now, I am generating a sinusoidal wave. It's a SIN called sinusoidal. Frequency is 30 kilohertz and amplitude is 2.00. So whatever is being generated here, let's see whether that is being received here or not. Some of the other things I like to explain together with the function generator is that there is a call function, this button. When you change this function, you, have, you watch this SIN. When I am pressing it, now this is TRI. That means you are generating a triangular wave. Next I am pressing SQR. That means you are generating a square wave. Next, when I press this, it says R and P, means you are generating a ramp signal. If I press again, it says R and P with minus sign. 
that says that you are generating a minus ramp signal. Again, when I press it, it says PLS, that called pulse. As here there is sign is no sign, that means a positive pulse. When I press it again, there is a negative, that means it is a negative pulse. When I press it again, it is called DC. DC means direct current signal. It is a negative DC signal being generated by this function generator, which amplitude is 5 volt. Now we all know that DC don't have frequency, so that's why when it is DC, there is no option of frequency. Again, when I press it, we are coming normal to the screen where all the parameters are shown. That frequency is this much. It is a sinusoidal wave of amplitude 2 volt. So three buttons are most important. One is to set the frequency, one to set the amplitude, a third to choose the function you are going to generate and this to vary the different amplitudes or the frequency. So let us see whether this has been generated over here or not. When you want to see this signal over here and suppose you have connected this wire to the channel 1, you have to first select that this button, it says that this is triggering 1 slash 2 or in the upper part it says CH 1 slash 2, that means CH denotes channel whether you are in channel 1 or channel 2. When you don't press it, when it is in the upper part, it says that you are in the channel 1. So this screen will be generating things or being viewing things which is put in this channel 1. When I press this, this says that now this screen will be showing what you have put over here. So now right now I have connected this to channel 1. So I will make this mode to channel 1. Now I have to search the signal because whatever is generated, this has to be seen over here. Now I have to search the signal in this screen. First of all, I will use this button called ground, called GD. When this I press this ground, you have seen there comes a reference line. We have to set this line using this Y pose. Y pose means Y position. Y position changes the position of this line in the Y direction. It's this way. When I'm moving, it's changing the position. So when I press this ground, I have to set this line in this black line you have seen. It is a little dense line. I have to set this over here. After setting this over here, I have to release this ground. Now I have given an amplitude of 2 volt, but I am not able to see my signal. So I have to set this knob and this knob. This is the magnification of the amplitude and this is the magnification of the frequency. As my magnification may be too large, that's why this signal is not coming on the screen. So what I have to do, I have to minimize my magnification. So I'm minimizing it. So I'm getting something. So as I have kept this, connect this output to the input of this CR. Now I have to search my signal. It's coming some signal, but it's not clear. I have put here what? A sinusoid. So this signal also should look like a sinusoid. But it's not looking like. So either the frequency is too high or the frequency is too low. In that case, it's moving over here. So let us change its time period. If I change in this time period and try to get the signal, we are getting the signal. But we are applying a sinusoid. What we are getting? A sinusoid. Here, this part from this y-axis is known as the amplitude of the signal and this x-axis is known as the time period in which the signal is repeating its cycle. Using this time period, we can determine the frequency of a sinusoidal wave. All of us know that. So, as you can see, this signal is moving. So, here we have that one feature of the CRO that you can make this signal hold. It's called the hold off. Using this hold off, what I am doing, I am making this signal stop so that we can calculate the time period. So, this L is what, as I said, is the magnification of the amplitude. So this button doesn't changes the magnitude of the signal, but it just changes the view. It's same here, 2 volt is coming, here also is 2 volt, but I am changing the view. It's a magnifying glass kind of thing. Okay. So as I have changed the view, let it be somewhere here. I'm taking this as my proper view and making this signal a stable using hold off. I'm going to calculate different parameters of this signal. Two parameters are most important, one is the amplitude, the other is the frequency. How to calculate the frequency using this CRO? You can see that this whole screen of the CRO is divided into various blocks. And each block is again divided into various small blocks. So this is called one block. If I 
so it is in the span. This entire is one block, and one block is divided into one, two, three, four, five small blocks. So in five small blocks means each block is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. So each block is 0 0.2 small block, and the entire is one. So the one entire block is divided into five small units of 0 0.2. So now calculate this amplitude. The most easiest feature in this CRO is this XY. What this XY do? When we press it, it simply compresses the x axis because when we say amplitude, we are not concerned about this x axis, we are concerned about the y axis. So, I press this x axis, this xy, so it compresses the x axis, we are concerned about only y axis. So, now let us count this how many blocks this line is taking. Okay, if you, if you feel like this is not countable using this y post adjust it properly suppose this make this black line as the reference line and just set it at this line and then start counting from there so if i count from here if i set it properly yeah if i count from here you can see that it is one entire block then it is again going up till how much it's near about 1.9 so from 1, 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, it's around 1.9. So if I calculate this amplitude, I will show you how to calculate the amplitude. If I say amplitude A, this amplitude A is equal to what? Is equal to the number of blocks. That is, that was, now we are going to calculate the amplitude. So how to calculate the amplitude? As I already told you to press this XY, where this will be compressed. And now we are going to count the number of blocks. After counting the number of blocks, we found that this is 1.9. So this amplitude will be equal to 1.9, that is the number of blocks, into, why this 1? This is 1 because here this knob is at 1. So the magnification you are using is 1. So I have made 1.9 into 1, which is equal to what? 1.9 volts. So why this volt is there? Because here you can see from this bigger gap, till this bigger gap you have different magnification units with their value of volts see v is written so this v is denoting volts from this bigger gap to this bigger gap in the right hand side you can see this is mv called millivolts that's why whenever this knob is in this range you have to use the unit volts when this knob is from here to here somewhere in between you have to use the unit millivolts so in total we are getting the amplitude to be 1.9 into 1 which is the magnification is equal to 1.9 the unit is volts. So you have the amplitude of 1.9 volts but we were giving how much amplitude? 2 volts. So this 2 volts is coming down over here 1.9 volt. Why the difference is there? You might have heard about different resistance losses. So this wire has some resistance. You are using a big wire. So this wire has various resistance. So what happened, whatever is been generated, due to the resistance of this wire, some part has been dropped here. So exactly 2 volt is not coming, a small error that has been dropped here and 1.9 volt is coming. So this is how we calculate the amplitude. Now moving to the next parameter, I am releasing this x one. We are moving into how to calculate the frequency. To calculate the frequency, we should know the time period. So first, again it's moving, so let, let it be first ground. Take it at the center, release the ground. Then make it hold if it is moving. Now, to calculate the frequency, we should know the time period. Because we define frequency as the number of cycles completed or the time taken by one cycle to complete its complete rotation. So let us discuss that what is happening here. It is always calculated in x-axis, the time. So here, if you can see, if I say one cycle, if I This is one cycle. From if I say from here to here, it is one cycle. Or from here to again coming here is one cycle. So whichever way you can take, whenever the signal repeats it again, whenever a signal repeats itself again, that is said to be one cycle. From here, if it coming till here means again from here it is repeating it, it, it again. So it's called one complete cycle. From here to here, from here to here, wherever you can take, you have to take one complete cycle. 
So you have to calculate here how many blocks this one cycle is taking to complete its repetition. So let us calculate this. If I take it a little more stable. From here, it is taking around, if I calculate from here, it's taking around 1.3, 1.3 as the number of blocks taken by one cycle. Now the next parameter we are going to calculate is the frequency. How to calculate the frequency? To calculate the frequency, we have to first calculate the time period. What is time period? In the time period is the time taken by one complete cycle to come. Here if you say one complete cycle, that is with this one, one complete cycle or any one which is a one complete cycle. So to complete that one cycle, what is the time taken? We have to take into blocks. If you know the blocks, we can using this magnification, we can calculate the time taken by that particular cycle to complete its rotation. So if I see what is the time taken by this cycle, we can put here. So this is one complete cycle. It is almost taking 1.7. You count this scale. If I count this scale from here, if you take that this is one cycle from this to this, this is around 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, once it's 1.7. So it is moment 1.7, you can say time period is 1.7, and you have to see the magnification of this time period. Now, right now you can see this is the knob. This knob is at 2. So we are using this into 2. So this 1.7 into 2 is giving us 3.4. Why I have taken milliseconds? Because from this gap you can see from here till this gap. There is a small line. The unit will be in seconds if the, this knob is somewhere here. From here till this gap over up the unit will be millisecond if the knob is in this range. From this gap till this gap, if the knob is over here, this, then the unit will be microsecond. So we have three different units in this scale, seconds, milliseconds and microseconds. So as my knob here was in millisecond range, so I have used the unit millisecond. Now we all know the relation between frequency and time period. Frequency is the inverse of time period. So I have to calculate the frequency and making it 1 by time period. What was our time period? 3.4 milliseconds. In 3.4 I have multiplied it into 10 to the power minus 3 because all of us know that milli is 10 to the power minus 3. So the millisecond is now converted into second. When I divide this all I am getting 294.21 hertz. And what our first frequency being used was 300 hertz. So we are very near to the frequency which is generated. Again, I am saying why the difference is there because of this wire being used. I am saying again and again that every wire you are using in an electronic circuit or in electronic apparatus has some resistance. Due to that resistance, the resistance may be offered to the frequency, may be offered to the voltage, may be offered to the current. Due to that, if it is 2 volt, we were getting less than 2 volt that was 1.9. And as it is 300 hertz in the frequency, we are getting less than 300 hertz, but it is approximately equal to the C. So this is how we calculate the amplitude and the frequency using it, CR. The same thing can be if I change this from here and I put it over here. Now I am not getting the signal because my channel is in 1. I have to change this channel. Now my channel went to channel 2. So now whatever is given in this input will be shown on the screen. So as the view is small, that's why this is used to magnify the view. So we can see the signal properly. Same way you can change the frequency and you can vary the amplitude. So you have two channels, the amplitude view for two channels are different, but the frequency view is the common for both the channels. Okay? So this is channel 2, now it is shown here, and this is channel 1 if you are giving this input here. If you want to see both the channel input, then you have to suppose I am using one more function. Now this I have added one more function generator. I have connected it to the channel 1 and the another function generator I am connected to the channel 2. You can see over here that using this when it is in channel 1 you are viewing the signal which is generated from here and we are viewing here. When we make it channel 2 this signal is being generated by this. When we want to see both then you have to this dual. You can see one signal, there are two signals, one being generated by this and the other being generated by this. 
so you can view both the signal using this two channel CR okay and the frequency is same see if I change this frequency view the frequency of both the signal are changing even the signal frequency changes and the signal which is behind the first one is also changing but if I change this magnitude of channel 1 you will observe that only one signal amplitude is varying because this is independent of the channel 2 when I vary this channel frequency uh, amplitude you can see the amplitude of this signal is varying but the behind that signal is not varying because this is independent of this so both are functioning independently when it comes to amplitude but both are functioning at the same time when it comes to frequency so this is about that. so there are two modes one is channel 1 channel 2 and we can also see both the using few things that I like to explain I won't be showing it on the CR but what are the things one thing what is this it's called intensity which increases and decreases the intensity of the signal there is another called focus which increases the focusness see it's becoming little blurred and not very clear so you can increase if I say that signal if I change this see you will become little blurred I want to change the clarity so the focus is changed here is called x magnitude see see x magnitude into 10 when I press it what you have seen that my amplitude or the you can say the view of my time period is been multiplied by 10 so it is 10 times more means my one cycle needs 10 times more number of blocks to complete its rotation this is what into 10 means but I make it to the previous here is some calibrated 0 0.2 volt and 2 volt this is showing the symbol of a square wave so this means that when you connect one wire from here and you want to view means this CRO can also generate a square wave of 0 0.2 volt amplitude and a 2 volt amplitude both are there so this is small feature has been inbuilt in this CRO this is not of much importance the same can also be used using function generator but you are using this already CRO uh, this is a component tester it's not very important for this level because when we insert a component over here by using this component figure we will get one figure over here one view that view will say whether your component is working or not so that's why it is a component tester dependent on the figure generally we call, call those figure as Lissajous figure you might have heard the name of the Lissajous figure so what is the pattern of the figure determining that pattern we say whether the component is working or not okay. I already explained you about this y movement of y right now it's only this y and this is x is the movement of this x direction this is x y to calculate the amplitude by removing it and this is for frequency this is for amplitude for now this is all about CRO and how a function generator works so I like to mention one more point about the function generator that I forgot to mention previously but that is not uh, like any Q kind of thing if you know now also you can relate so what I want to mention is that see you are right now in channel 2 so whatever is coming in then this channel will be viewed here I forgot to show you the practically use of this function so what when I change this function triangular right what is it getting a triangular wave again I change this function square what I am getting uh, square wave the square wave only the upper and the lower limit is shown the line connecting the upper and lower limit is not been shown in this here the upper and the lower so it represents a square wave again when I change the function it is a ramp you know this is called a ramp signal this is in first that direction your tiltness is on the right hand side when I change the function again it is a negative ramp you can see Previously it was on the right hand side, the tiltness, now your tiltness is on the left hand side. So it's the negative ramp. Next, when I change the function again, a pulse. So it is giving a small pulse. This is one pulse, second pulse, third pulse, small, small pulse. Then again I change the function, it's giving a negative pulse. Before these pulses were on the positive side, now the pulses are on the negative side. When I again change the function, you are getting a DC. Now to see this DC, as this signal is coming on this channel 2 I have to change this mode you yes, see AC and DC to the when it is up it is AC when I press it it is in DC so you can see how many volt DC minus 5 volt now I should get what from here 
as I am making the mode, this is DC 5.0 volts. When I in, this is the amplitude magnification, I have increased it. From this reference, you have to calculate. So, from this reference, if you calculate, this is 1, then 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 1.5. 1.5 into how much? 0 0.2. It is saying 0 0.35. So, you can calculate the function DC. So, we all know that DC do not have frequency, though it is a straight line. And as the other signal, like this, is having frequency, so it is a not a straight line. So when DC comes, it's a straight line. When DC doesn't come, it is a sinusoidal or any signal having frequency. So by changing this function, we are getting different signals over here. So this is how the function is being viewed here, and you can use different channels or the CRO to view the whatever this function generate is generating and what this is viewing. So at the end, in the conclusion, I can say that this is a source. This is the eye of an electronic engineer. I means where we view things. So this is viewing all the signals being generated by this source on the eye of the CR. Thank you for watching this video.